All right, guys, welcome to Flavo Rihanna's MMA show. I'm your host, Flavo Rihanna, brought to you by Four Corner Sports. All right, guys, so last night I was watching a movie, went to bed, didn't even bother checking Twitter. All right, and then I wake up. I wake up in the middle of the night, and I'm like, let me just check to see what ended up happening. I, um, I go on ESPN. I go, I see Khabib officially retired. I was like, we know that already. So I click on the article by, um, Brett Okamoto. Fabulous piece, right? And I'm like, wow. Dana officially accepted the fact that he retired. And I'm like, what took so long? So then I hopped over to uh, to Twitter, and wow, the madness that went on. Like, if you went to bed at a normal time on the East Coast at midnight, right? Like, right before midnight, you would have missed all this madness, all right? Khabib officially retires, the official, official retirement, right? I know that he announced his retirement back in October, but then now... Fast forward to what? What are we? March nineteenth, uh, and yeah, March nineteenth. Dana White at midnight f- officially accepted the fact that this guy, Khabib Nurmagomedov, is retiring. Vacates the belt. Says, you know what? UFC two sixty two. We're gonna have a. We're gonna have the belt on the line. The belt's gonna be vacated. And would you know it? You would have thought that it would have been Dustin Poirier, but no. Dustin Poirier has said millions and millions of times that he wants to fight for the Conor Trilogy. So Dustin Poirier is not included for the vacant title belt, uh, the vacant title belt for the UFC lightweight title. Instead, they I know the UFC were, were trying to have talks um, with Chan- Michael Chandler versus uh, Justin Gaethje. They pulled an audible, and they now officially having... Charles Oliveira versus Michael Chandler for the USC lightweight title. Wow, this is this is big news, big news because Khabib has always said, Khabib has always said the fact that he does not want to hold up the division. And I gotta say, like you know, he's a man of his word. It's just Dana White refused to allow this man to, to uh, retire. He wanted him to get to thirty and know. Khabib wanted wanted to honor his his mother's wishes by. Um, not fighting another fight after the Justin Gaethje fight. And wow, you know, man stuck to his word. I know he had plenty of meetings with uh, Dana White, was probably just being very nice about it. But yes, he is officially retired. The UFC is stripping Habib of his lightweight championship. Now the belt is up for grab uh, in May. I believe the date is May 15th. And that most likely is going to be the main event. Uh, Charles Oliveira versus Michael Chandler. Wow, that is big stuff right there. It is huge due to the fact that Charles Oliveira is on an eight-fight win streak, all right? This guy's been begging for a title shot, begging for a title shot. He's a, He says that he knows what he's worth. And Michael Chandler, one fight into his UFC career, former champion at Bellator, all right, knocks out Dan Hooker and is now... In the title picture right now, in a title fight against Charles Oliveira. Now, there is going to be a lot of questions as for what's you know how come you know Dustin Poirier is not there. Well, I already said it. He values the fact that he wants to fight Connor. He's after the money, which I understand. I mean, this is the fight business. You don't have a a, a long career, all right? A, a long you know span of you being in this field. As if like you were a basketball player or a baseball player, you're not gonna be able to do this, you know, into your early 40s, all right? Without trying, without having like long damaging effects. So Dustin Poirier wants to get the big money fights. He wants to make sure that he's gonna be able to fight Connor because Connor does draw a crowd. Whether there's a title or no title on the line, he does draw a crowd, all right? So he wants to get that. Plus, now this goes into Justin Gaethje. What happens with Justin Gaethje? All right. Well, unfortunately, it does seem like Justin Gaethje is the odd man out. And it's not like you can have him face, you know, Tony Ferguson again. He already had dominated Tony Ferguson. All right. He he beat him up pretty bad. Do you have do you have Justin Gaethje fight RDA? 
well, if RDA doesn't have any interest in fighting Islam Makachev, then maybe that might be the fight to make. All right. I don't love the idea of having Gaethje fight Islam only because of the fact that we, we have already seen what Habib can do to Justin Gaethje. Now put Habib with, with striking, much improved striking against Justin, Justin Gaethje, and that would give you Islam Makachev. So I have no interest in wanting to watch that. I guess if the stars align, if if that's the only fight to make, then yeah, sure. But I mean, right now, Justin Gaethje, I feel like, has like two options. One, sit out until after the, uh, what's it called? The, you got the Charles Oliveira versus Michael Chandler fight. Or two, fight Rafael Dos Anjos. And after that, if you beat RDA, you'll be able to get on to get maybe the, the next title shot if Dustin Poirier loses to Conor McGregor. Or here's option number three. If Conor wins, does the UFC make Conor fight Justin Gaethje? That would be very some that would be very interesting right there. That would be extremely interesting right there. I would love to see that matchup. That matchup sounds very violent. So that's part of the news that has happened last night. Very excited to see that that happening. Now with UFC 262, does the UFC go in and try to make that fight with Amanda Nunes versus Juliana uh, Pena? Juliana Pena, you know, went on on an interview with Ariel Hawani where she was calling out Amanda Nunes, you know, begging her to fight her. I think it was one of the great promos out there. You know, it was high level trash talking. And you know, once you she she actually did mention fighting um, Amanda Nunes on Mother's on Mother's Day's weekend, but you know I can't see Amanda Nunes fighting on a UFC fight card. There's somebody else fighting on that card, and he's on the main event. So I'll get to that in just a second. But does the UFC have Amanda do the co-main event for UFC 262? Uh, Amanda Nunes versus Julian Pena. That would be a very interesting fight. You know, I would love to see that happen, but we'll have to see. And we also had more additional news. We had uh, the Bantamweight division is now going into full effect, right? So now you have an idea of what's going to happen because you're going to have uh, Rob Font and Cody Garbrandt fighting one another. And then you're also going to have TJ Dillashaw and Corey Sanhagen fighting one another. Now, I might have the dates confused. But, yeah, so Corey Sanhagen and TJ Dillashaw are fighting on May 8th. Wow. The return of TJ Dillashaw is back, and he is fighting his former sparring partner, Corey Sanhagen. Corey Sanhagen, last fight, he had a flying knee knockout to uh, Frankie Edgar. And then the fight prior to that, he had a uh, spinning heel kick, knocking out Marlon Marais. So this guy is on a roll after losing to Aljamain Sterling. So... If Corey Sanhagen gets past TJ Dillashaw this time, wow, there's no denying um, Aljamain. St- I mean, there's no denying uh, Corey Sanhagen on fighting the winner between Aljamain Sterling versus Peter Yan. All right, there's zero doubt about that whatsoever. But if TJ Dillashaw gets past Corey Sanhagen, TJ Dillashaw puts himself back into the conversation of him being possibly the, the number one contender. Um, after the Peter Yan uh, Aljamain Sterling fight, so it, it seems like this is going to be a title eliminator fight, a number one contender fight. The winner of this most likely will face the winner of Aljamain versus Peter Yan. So this is big stuff. And then on May twenty second, two weeks after the Corey Sanhagen T.J. Dillashaw fight, you also have Rob Font. I believe this is going to be his first main event against Cody Garbrandt. Wow. Now, Rob Font has been deserving of a big name. There's very few names that are bigger than, than Cody Garbrandt at the Bantamweight division, and this is a huge fight for both individuals. And here's why. Cody Garbrandt, last time he fought was back in June, all right? UFC 250 when he knocked out Rafael Asuncao, um with that buzzer beater knockout. And then Rob Font destroyed Marlon Marais, all right? And the last UFC fight card in December... 
destroy Marlon Rice, pure boxing, all right? New England's own Rob Fawn is going to be facing Cody Garbrandt. I cannot wait for this fight. I want to see what's going to happen. Can Cody Garbrandt's chin handle well with the with Rob Font's boxing? Rob Font has one of the crisp, pure boxing skills at 135. I want to see if, if Cody can handle that. All right. I truly love the fact that Cody's staying in the Bantamweight division. I know back last November he was scheduled to fight Davidson Figueredo, but he was not feeling well, and he was going to be fighting for the flyweight title. But the fact he's staying in Bantamweight, if he gets past um, Rob Font, then that opens up. He might be able to challenge for a title after after the Rob Font the Rob Font fight, depending on how he he uh, does in that fight. If he dominates Rob Font, you know, and destroys him inside of two minutes, then maybe. But it may seem like Cody Garbrandt is just after the Rob Font fight, maybe one fight away. So we'll have to see then. But this is huge news. The month of May, we have so much going on. We have April. All right. Fans are going to be in, in attendance, all right, for UFC 261. Um, it's going to be headlined by Kamaru Usman, the world's weight champ, versus Jorge Masvidal. Usman versus Masvidal, part two. That That's that's uh, officially set right now. You also have in the co-main event, you have Wei Li Zhang versus Rose Namajunas. I cannot wait for that fight, all right? I think Rose is one of the best, you know, strikers at the strawweight division. And she's facing a, a very scary opponent in Wei Li Chang, who is a champion, who hits like a truck. So this is going to be a crazy fight. And then you're going to have one of the greatest female fighters of all time, Valentina Shevchenko, facing in a former champion at the strawweight division, uh, Jessica Andrade. Can this be uh, Valentina's toughest bout? At 125, we'll have to see. I think it is. I think Jessica Andrade is a problem. The way that she ended up bo- um, hitting Caitlin Chukagin with a body shot, sending her down to the floor, retreating back. I think Jessica Andrade is pretty scary at 125. What well, we'll have to see, but because Valentina is the bullet, she is phenomenal at that weight class, all right? I think that it's her and Amanda that's like neck and neck when it comes to being, you know, one of the great um, female fighters of all time. I think that the public just doesn't know Valentina that well because Amanda just generates so much popularity to the casuals. But UFC 261 is going to be phenomenal. And then next week, we have Francis Ngannou versus Stipe Miocic. We also have the featherweight title on the line with Alexander Volkanovsky versus Brian Ortega. So there's so many title fights coming up in in, in the next uh, three pay-per-views. It's crazy, all right? It is crazy. So I cannot wait. This is a great time to be a fan of MMA. This is a great time to be a fan of the UFC. And we have so many good fights coming in almost every single week. Cannot wait for this, all right? Guys, until then, I'm Flav Oriana. And thank you for tuning in to Flav Oriana's MMA um, show, all right? And please hit that like and subscribe button. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace, guys.